Hi, this is Bruce, and welcome to my tutorial on the Majestic Dash 8 Q400 Pro. Uh, my goal here is to get us from a cold and dark condition up to taxi ready. And so, thank you for joining me. This is a video that I'll be using for my own reminding uh, later on. If I haven't flown this aircraft in months, it's nice to review something quick and hopefully under 30 minutes. That'll get me back up to speed and enjoy the plane again in the future. As you can see from the external view, we've got the GPU unit already in place. And so let's go ahead and pop into the interior. It'll be a little quieter. And I can just give a little bit of background. I'm using P3D version 4.2, Chase Plane, Active Sky, Ultimate Traffic Live, 100% general and commercial. P3D's traffic is also at 100% in both cases. I'm not on VATSIM at the moment, and I like a lot of activity around me in the air and on the ground. Windows 10, i5 is overclocked, SSD drive, NVIDIA GTX 1070 in use. I just include that in case anybody was curious. And I also appreciate comments uh, at the bottom there. If I've missed something or misconstrued or misunderstood something, uh, we can all certainly learn from each other, and I look forward to that too. By the way, before we begin, if you're not familiar with this, uh, the plane comes already with some um, failure rates attached at a certain rate. If you want to turn off your failures, uh, not your personal failures, but the aircrafts, you got to go to the aircraft's main folder in P3D, and then you open up the INI file, the INI file. Then inside of there, you'll see the INI itself uh, in the notepad with administrative privileges on. Uh, you can search through that and look for the wear off factor. And instead of it reading 10, which would be the maximum number of failures the airplane might experience, uh, type in zero and save that, and then you won't have any more failures uh, during those flights. That's if you choose to do that. We're going to go ahead now and sweep through our checklist. So we'll start with the overhead. Um, even though the GPU is outside, we're not connected yet. So we're going to start with the upper left, work down the column second column, then down the third column, then down the fourth column in that order. So up here in the top left, DC control, battery, master on, main on, aux on, standby bat on. Gen 1, 2, main bus tie is already on. To turn on the power from the GPU, we can just hit the exterior, external power here. And then rolling on down through ice protection, we can leave all of these alone. I just want to make a side note that if the weather's nasty, snowy, rainy, uh, icy rather, um, the engine intakes should be clicked, left clicked so that there's nothing like closed listed and that helps get the engines fired up See so you now they're open. Bank angle. If your engines are turning but the you know the props and stuff aren't catching it may be this very problem so go ahead and make sure those are open in those kinds of conditions. Ordinarily though it should say closed. If you've got nasty conditions on landing you can increase your VREF speeds too. Here's your pitot tube heats here, but we won't turn those on yet. Windshield, I like to turn it on warm up at this point. Then we'll move down the second column, no changes. Down the third column, here's our APU control. We'll come back to that in a minute. Engine starts right here. The cabin altitude, this little dial here does work. You can change your landing altitudes to whatever's appropriate, like 499 at the moment. Uh, leave it on auto, nothing else here needs to change. Then down in the exterior lights, right click the anti-collision light up to red. That tells people that activity is happening here and things are about to begin. Air conditioning can be turned on with recirc, and you can do min, norm, max, but they just recommend keeping it on min. The packs can be here on auto, and then the heat can be between the 10 and 12 o'clock positions. Here, fasten seat belt, no smoking, arm, the emergency lights, all left clicks. And for right now, now, that takes care of business here on the overhead. Just going to pop down now to the pilot and command position and just comment here. We'll turn off that warning light by left clicking it. Uh, this spoiler section here, it should be on taxi. This little switch should be down. It's covering it up. If you are approaching for takeoff, then flip it up to flight and continue your journey that way. And then when you land your taxi again, you click it to taxi. If you forget to put it up to flight, it'll automatically do so when you take off. You just have to remember then to put it on the uh, taxi setting when you're at your arrival gate or arrived and taxiing into the gate. Then I'm going to slide over here to the co-pilot's portion and we got the anti-skid. I'm going to turn that on and then I like to just look over here to the left to the pilot's side and there's these two slider switches here. Just left click each. That takes care of the mist that might form on these windows. Those are demisting vents there. 
Also, if you want to move the seat back, just left click on the seat, the armrests go up, the seat moves back. And then down here, that symbol, that gives rid of the yoke not only on this side, but also on the other side, so it works together. And if you want it back, just click the same symbol, and there you go. For right now, I think I'll choose to leave it off. Here is your landing flap settings that you're anticipating, and so usually it's 15. I just right click that, and that takes care of that right there. Next comes our FMSs. We've got a left and a right. Both need to be turned on separately, so this switch here will do it, where it says on off dim, and then up here it starts to uh, boot up and it'll run through a systems check pass each one. Disable the time, I'm going to put it on pause until that's nearly done. Okay, it's run through and passed all of its systems. It asks now, do you want to accept these figures? Yes, sure. Click accept on both of them. Just a note now, let's just pretend for a minute that all we have on is our batteries. We don't have a GPU on the ground. We don't have our auxiliary power, power unit APU on. We're just strictly on batteries, but we want the ground power unit on. Go to data, go to services, and there it is up here. Now right now I can cancel it like so, or I can request it like so. Um, I'm just going to leave it requested for now, and while we're in this view, the gear pins are very important to keep in mind. If you don't stow your gear pins, you're not going to get your gear up when you take off, and you may be frustrated wondering what happened. You also can't change them because as much as you want to click the soft key to the left of it, nothing happens. The reason is all the doors are closed, and the gear pins can't be passed through. So go to exits, and then forward passenger door, click that, and notice they dimmed and shrank back a little bit. That's because this activity is going on now. When they brighten up again, you could open up, like now, you could open up another door if you wanted to, and then it dims, and then when it brightens up. So it's kind of slow, but it does work. Now we've got the forward passenger door open. Now watch. Go back to gear pins, and we can install them if we want. So now our gear won't go up if we take off in this condition. Or we can stow them, like so, and now the gear will retract when we take off. So now that we've looked at that, we know how that works. Uh, mine, for instance, were already stowed at the start, but a lot of times they're not, so just to be aware of it, go back to exits, we can now click on that, notice they dimmed again, we're going to wait a second, the open will go out, and these will brighten back up, and doors are closed, pins are stowed, All everybody's happy, and then just real quick, our pushback, our real-time, straight, left, right, end, those are the different features. If I were to switch now to the pilot command position and push shift 4, I can get all of that to pop up for me, and I'm going to shrink this too, so it doesn't like clog up the entire view of everything inside. There, that's handy. Here you can still see straight, left, right, and end. When it comes time to push back, if you want to see what's going on outside, just put it in this position, or go to an external position and hit Shift 4, and you can control it from here. That, I think, is the best way possible to move forward with this. So pop back into the pilot command position and then back to where we started. So that's how this works and it's super handy. Hit return, we're back into the general um, data portion and needn't go through any more than that, but these are pretty self-explanatory and you can explore those if you wish. Nav, informational pieces, VNAV I don't use, DTO, Direct2, we'll get to that in a minute, uh, lists, we'll get to that later. Fuel now is what we want to enter. I've already used a tool that comes with this aircraft called the control panel. You want to have like a shortcut or something like that to this. You can put then in the weight and balance section the following numbers if you don't have any in. On the baggage section in the mass box for forward, put I just put one. And in the aft I put five. And then where it says DAA in the forward I put 20 and in the aft 50. I max out all the passengers which comes to 76 people. And then for the trip fuel, because it's an hour or less, I put 2,500 for the trip fuel. And then I add 2,000 in case I have to go to an alternate airport. So I've got 4,500 takeoff fuel, 2,500 trip fuel. If I'm flying for two hours, for instance, I'd have 5,000 in the trip fuel and 7,000 in the takeoff fuel. Then you hit the calculate button, make sure that all of the zones are still in the black. There's little dots, um, like, the, for example, um, takeoff max and that kind of thing. That's all there. Zero fuel, all that. They should all be in the black. And then you hit send data to flight sim. When you do that, it'll automatically pause and everything gets really quiet. Just hit the P on the keyboard and you're back in business. Now opposed to some uh, FMSs, 
where you enter the figure and then you click where you want the figure to go. In this case, you have to click where you want the figure to be put in first and then enter, say for instance, 76 passengers, hit enter. This is the weight because you're at 187 average. Hit enter again, now it jumps to cargo. I always enter 1380, enter, jumps to fuel on board. Well, if you forget what it is, just look up here and there's the fuel on board at the moment, left and right. So now we'll just put in the 4500 because that's total, right? And then up here for the alternate, I have to select it. You don't need to do this, but I do. I just put the 2000 that we'd had added there for the alternate number. And that takes care of everything on our fuel page. If you want to see the other pages, of course, just go through it with the next button. Uh, it just scrolls right back to one. You can also advance those pages by just clicking on the fuel. Here, same thing, it just, you can't go previous with that, whereas you could with this. Then the flight plan. We are currently in Portland, so it's KPDX. Hit enter. Now it says accept. You could click this or just hit enter again as a shortcut. It makes it much faster. KSEA is where we're headed, Seattle. Enter, enter. Now these are the start, there's the finish. 112 nautical miles separate us, uh, heading a 349 degrees direct. Now, obviously, that's not going to be the flight plan. I've already looked at the real world once, and to KSEA, they're using a star, standard terminal arrival route. So if I highlight that, because that's the destination for the star, and then I hit menu, I get this. And it'd be the same if we click PDX, not hit depart and all that, but now I'm gonna hit arrive, because we're arriving there, and we're gonna come in on one six left. That's number two, so I put two here and hit enter. Here's the star opportunities. There's number four is what I want, so I'll put four. And then the transition for that is going to be Krieg. That'll be my entry point for it. I'm going to come in on an ILS of 16 left, which is number one. And now I am I can choose a transition if I choose. I'm going to go ahead and pick Griffey, put number one in there. Now when I look at my flight plan, it's all listed. Now this no link flashing at me is what you should expect. The way to get rid of it is left click to that where it highlights it and then delete, D-L. Click it once, now it's flashing at you. It wants to know you're sure you want to do this. Click it again, yes I do, and there it's gone. You can just hit next to look at all the subsequent pages and make sure they're at where you want them to be. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one too. Even though there's a vector there, technically speaking, I should have left that flashing at me, but by this time I'm gonna be manually flying it anyway to Griffey and then pick it back up from there for my final approach to 1-6 left down here. So that's the flight plan. Uh, you can advance through the pages by clicking the flight plan button and it rolls right back around to page one or next and previous. The performance, just some informational pieces. Tune is wonderful. Um, COM1, for instance, you would click the COM1 soft button, already is, but if you wanted to change it like COM2, COM1. And then enter the uh, frequency, but you don't have to enter decimals. In fact, there isn't even a decimal on there. Just put them in straight order and hit enter and it automatically does the first three to the left of the decimal and the remainder after that. So we can go ahead and do the same if we wanted to for COM2. Uh, NAV1, for instance, is 116.8. I just put 1,016.8 and I just put the decimal right in the right spot. Continue on down as you would see. Here's ATC, for example, 4532, four grins. Just put that in and hit enter and that sets up our ATC. Here's our COM1 on, you just roll it to on. The little inner knob does everything to the right of the decimal. The next ring out does everything to the left of the decimal. You can change between them with this there. Kilo, Papa, Delta. There you go. And then, uh, I don't know where that voice came from, etc. Here on the uh, bearings, we're gonna, I like to use FMS1, which is the second over. It's a little bit more clear on this side on the co-pilots. Uh, the TCAS switches between all traffic or imminent traffic. That's what that option does. The weather or terrain shows up on your multi-function flight display. Data, format, range, um, the brightness for the MFP or the PFD. Um, that's the same on both sides. Then what we're gonna do is we need to cross fill. To cross fill something, you wanna cross fill into the computer piece that doesn't have the information. So don't hit cross fill ever over here. You want to hit cross fill here. So, oh, actually, I'm going to put DTO first. Direct two, number two, because Creek hit it. Now it's in this magenta color. There it is, magenta. That was also going to be transferred. So hit X fill. We got two choices. 
that we need to fill out. Flight plan is one, so just click the soft key there, and it takes just a few seconds. And now fuel, same thing. And then if we were to click the flight plan, everything is now identical, and that's how you cross fill. Then let's just go ahead and slide it down here. Uh, throttles are here. This is the control lock. This is used for taxing. It should be in this position. When you're ready to take off, do not forget to left click that to move it up here. Otherwise, your throttles won't be able to go all the way up. I right know this stops them from taxing too heavily. All that makes good sense. This is your parking brake off, on. Here is your trim for takeoff in this rectangular white space. What you do is, and I've got it linked up to my yoke, I'm going to be moving the trim down. When you hear that click, 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 that's when you stop. That's when it's happy. And we've got our condition levers here and fuel off. If you right click those, they will move in tandem, or you can use your left mouse button and it'll move them individually. Down here is your COM1, COM2 units. We're going to go ahead and roll both of those to the FMS, and that way I can control um, my frequencies here, like. Uh, VOR1, VOR2, ADF, here's um, VHFs and stuff. All of this is all listed. You can change these simply by clicking a soft key, for instance. There it highlights it. And then just using these knobs here to change the numbers. So if we were to go 116.8, clicking that soft key again rolls it up to the active position. You can do that here, or if you put it on the FMS, you can control those through the tune feature on the FMS, and that just makes a lot of sense. Um, don't change the nav here. Don't play with those at all. Here's your weather radar. Put it on standby. I like both of these on nav for the left and the right. If, however, you want to see the electrical engines, fuel, or doors, then you need to put it on system. And let's pick doors just for fun. And then if we look up here now, here's the doors in the MFP. And it's showing us that they're all green, they're all closed. I'm going to get rid of that caution light. So that's how that works, but I prefer just for now to leave it on uh, the nav setting. And everything else down here is good. Now, see that um, ATC to squawk your squawk code? This is where you need to hold that button in with the left, and now it's on, on alt and altitude. And so that's where you change that from standby to on alt. Left click, hold, and then it says this, and you're all set and ready to go. Let's just go back up to the FMS just then for a second. Um, if you wanted to enter another waypoint in here, what you do is you click the waypoint that you will uh, have following the one that you're entering. So whatever you're enter is going to be ahead of it. So here's Krieg, and I want to put, um, say, Battleground, PTG, BTG, Battleground. If I hit Enter, and I can hit Enter again, now there's the BTG that I just entered. Krieg then reappears. When you're first typing BTG, this looks like it's going to be totally eclipsed by it, but it doesn't. It comes back when you hit enter. Now I got both of them. If I want to get rid of it, highlight it, delete, delete, boom, right back where we started. I'm also going to go ahead and just hit the KPDX menu. We're departing, and we're departing on 28 left. I'm just going to put 5 in there. Enter. I'm not going to choose a SID in this case. I'm just going to go right to the flight plan. So that's now all set up. Now we're getting close to wrapping things up. Um, here in the glare shield, there's just certain things to note. Uh, let me pull this up for visibility's sake, just so we can see it happen. That blue piece here, of course, is your heading controls. And it speeds up. The, f the more you rotate it with speed, it, it, it accommodates that and speeds up for you. So it's not a real slow turning device. Here's your VOR that we're changing left and right. Uh, this is your altitude here. Now, to select an altitude that you're going to climb to and level off at with the autopilot, hit Alt Cell, and then dial up the altitude button. I'm using my mouse wheel now, and just for myself, I'm going to put it at 14 for demonstration purposes, or in more practical purposes, what ATC would give me as my first altitude. Then I'm going to leave that alone, leave it be, and then um, we're going to move up here to vertical speed, click that, and then I'm going to move my mouse wheel towards myself to 20, 2,000 to 2,200. I think I'll start with 2,200. Notice it says wings level. I want heading select. So I'm going to hit HDG, the heading, and that gives me my heading select. I'm going to turn my YD, my yaw damper, on here. And then just the last thing I'm going to do just to show you is this nav source has three settings, nav 1, nav 2, and the GPS. So there's nav 2. And there's the FMSs to Krieg, 44.4 nautical miles away. 
So um, when I start off, I start off with the uh, VOR1 or NAV1, and then I roll it two to the right to pick up on the um, FMS's navigation, and then I'll click NAV when I do that. Right now, though, it's all on my headings, or if I entered a VOR, I could hit NAV for the VOR, but when I roll this to GPS, now the NAV is tied not to the VORs on the ground, but it's tied to the FMS settings that I've got entered. So let's go ahead, just for interest's sake, uh, fire up the uh, FMS. Oops, let me get rid of this thing here. Fire up the FMS. Or not the FMS, the APU, rather. Um, we're going to do that by pressing the power button. It does a little self-check here, a little flickering going on. And then when it stops, go ahead and press the start switch. And it says starter. Good sign, that. Um, down here, you may not see any activity being displayed, but if you wanted to hear it, you could always pop around to the outside, right? And hear the whining increasing. Okay. The real key, though, is to watch for it, because when these lights come on, now it's ready for us. It's running, of course. We don't need to hit the start again. And we want to press the generator in the bleed area. Watch. When we hit the press the generator, nothing happens. It's like, well, what's wrong? Is it broken? No. What happened was we still have the external power on. Take off the external power, then click generator. Now it says on and click bleed air. And away we go. And now we don't need the external GPU anymore. So that's really uh, instrumental and important in all of this. And then the bleeds we'll leave alone until we've got our engines running. So that's how the uh, APU is turned on and we've turned off our external power. If we were to pull up our um, data here, you can't see it very well, but basically I'm now canceling our GPU through that services piece and the um, data. So leaving it back on the flight plan. And you can do that yourself easily. Just Listen to what I've said, and it should fill in the blanks for you. Now we're going to go ahead and start our engine. Just for demonstration purposes, you may want to do this after pushback, but we're going to take off the recirc switch. We're going to right click on engine number two, leaving these both on norm. And now left click the start select, it says start select there. I'm going to look down here, and our values here are going to be changing slowly. There they are. When they get to 20, then I'm going to go ahead and bring up to start our condition lever, and it should catch. There's our temperature going up, our prop RPMs. It just takes a little while, um, but we're in good shape. It should continue as it, as it is. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get back up here to the overhead. This is clicked just a minute ago, telling me that now I'm ready for the next one. So left click. Select the start gone off, in other words. I've clicked that. Now I'm going to look down here again. Same situation as last time. This is the mirror image over here. It's going to approach 20. Then I'm going to bring up the condition lever to start. And away it goes. I'm going to go ahead and pause it just for a second and let it settle down. All right, things have settled down and equalized, so we're going to go ahead and go back up to the overhead and go down through our columns again. Our external power is off. If we needed some ice protection for the frame, here it is, slow or fast. Prop, here it is, on or off. If the weather's nasty, of course, we want to have our engine intakes open like snow and ice, particularly. Turn on our pitot tubes so we don't ice up our uh, tubes in flight, and then we can't tell what our indicated airspeed is. Uh, heat now is to norm in the window, and pilot side window heat is on. Might as well turn on our taxi lights, right? We could turn this off theoretically, but generally we want to leave it on until after we're airborne and then we can shut it off in flight. This doesn't change, that doesn't change. Now we can turn on our wing inspection lights, our white anti collision position logo. We'll leave this alone. We're going to turn on our research, bleeds left and right. And we could turn this up to norm if we wanted to. Leave those on auto. All of this is good. Uh, there are no other changes that I know of up here that we're going to need to make except, of course, the landing lights when we approach the uh, runway ready for takeoff. And um, if you want more engine power on takeoff, just take the research off. It should give you some more uh, boost to get you down on a shorter runway for takeoff. And the last thing we want to do before we drop out of here is to take off the main bus tie, put it to off. Here, all the others are still on. 
then dropping back down into the pilot command position down here to my left, uh, right behind the steering wheel here, I guess you could call it a wheel, a shepherd's crook almost. The steering is there, and I think I can give you a better view of it. One of these is going to catch it. There it is. Um, that would be steering off. That would be steering on. At this point, we'd want to put our steering on. What that does is, I'm using rudder pedals. That does a fine degree of turning. But if you use the uh, wheel or you use your, your joystick, you know, right, left, you get a much more dramatic turn rate. And you can also use your brakes to make that even more effective. In fact, you'll probably find that you do use your brakes quite a bit. And uh, a word for the wary. Oversteering this is so easy to do. So uh, apply a little break in the opposite direction before the lineup is where you want it, and you might be happy. Then go over here to your throttles, and with the right click, I'm going to run these up to the clear to the max and top for our taxi. You're going to really hear the sounds increase here shortly. And as we're taxiing, we want these numbers to both stay lit up, so it makes for a kind of a slow taxi, but don't be frustrated or rush it. Just keep these lit up to the propeller ground range. Great. Now we're going to look at the auto feather here, and also our auxiliary pumps here, and our standby hydraulic pressure and PTU. All those are green. With this aircraft also comes some uh, speed cards and things, and with those you can go over here and set the speed bugs if you wish. You do not have to do this, but you can. Um, the way this works is, let me just zoom it in here a little bit closer. You hit cell for select, and here's your list. If you keep pressing that, it goes V1, VR, V2, and then there's two other signatures. I'm not sure what the triangles are for, but they're only for your visual use anyway. In this case, looking at the uh, weight of the aircraft and the cards that were supplied, um, the first one, V1, is going to be 131, and the V1 is essentially the same thing as your VR, so you won't see those figures really being different. So hit sell now, VR, there we go. We're going to run this up to 131 again, and then sell again. Here's our V2, and that's going to be... Uh, I'm just going to put that as a maybe 10 over, so it's like 141. Let's keep it simple. And then our climb out rate is going to be, I'll just kick the next one for the arrow there. I'm going to know that it's going to be around 154 for the initial climb out rates. And I may not be getting these exactly, but uh, you know, never forget to fly the plane. Don't trust the numbers. Make sure you've got all the instrumentation in mind, watching your air speeds and behaviors and things. Remember, as a, my instructor used to tell me when I flew a long time ago, never forget to fly the plane. Simple, but effective. So that takes care of the cell select for the bug speeds. The barometric pressure, you can press B on the keyboard all day and mine doesn't do a thing. Uh, so I'm going to run it up to what I've known it to be, is to 31, or 30.10 rather. Um, and that sets it. If I pushed it, like it says here, it goes to standard. Decision height's preset at 200. Um, the MDA, it depends upon company policy. Some want you to climb to 1,000 above ground level before you level off and pick up your speeds. Um, I just typically ignore that. I'm happy with what it is and how it is right now. So that's up to you, of course. You can do a little research on that. And it's your goal. Just to jump to the chase now, because I've accomplished my goal, um, when I'm lining up for the runway or holding short. Uh, this is the time when we can take off this control bar there. We notice our condition levers are already up here to max. We we'll want five degrees of flaps. That's a classic um, degree and a half for takeoff. And end top is listed now. If we were to look up here on the overhead one more time, we'd want to turn on our landing lights. Left click each one. And I think looking this over one more time, everything up here is now done. We'll turn off our APU when we're in the air um, in the first 10,000, because that's what I do. And um, go along there. We got our steering on, our FMS, and all the other options are available to us and ready to go. In co pilot's position, nothing else there to do. These are all dialed up nicely. So remember, if you ever have a disparity between um, what's showing here on your courses and this figure here, 116.8, between your FMS and the uh, 
uh, comms down here. Just remember you left click, now you can adjust, and then when you click it again like this, it switches position from the working part up here to the active part. And you can do that with all of them. So aside from that, um, let me think for just a second and then we'll wrap it up. I'll put it down. Oh yes, uh, one little quickie. Don't forget to turn the uh, radar fully on. And there we go. And you can see the difference that terrain and the weather makes. That's going to be the uh, weather here in this case. It takes a minute to load through. You can see it coming in all scattered. So you can choose between the two of those if you like. And then TCAS, of course, varies whether it's auto or not. And that's the imminent ones. And those are just all traffic coming in there together. So obviously you can change the range as well. There we go, way out there, bring it in, bring it in. So um, handy, very nice aircraft to fly. Once you get the hang of it, it, it loads up way quicker than this video does. But I hope you really enjoy it. Thank you so much for being a part, and I appreciate your feedback if you have any to give me. And I'm looking forward to getting up and flying and enjoying my hobby, and I hope you do too. Thank you for being a part. Have fun. Take care.